All praise to the most high. Bless up to the chosen one. Shalom, Yasharala. Um, we were just disconnected. I cut the last one short. This is going to be episode two within the same series of conversations. We're still talking on faith. So, you know, uh, I'm going to have Summer Rose bless us with some more um, knowledge and we're going to continually build out. Um, but just like I said, the last conversation was cut short, technical difficulties. Uh, but within that, we're going to go ahead and finish out the conversation. Uh, I'm just waiting for Summer Rose to come on right now. There we go. Hold on for just a second. Shalom. Hey, my phone is acting weird. No worries. I don't know. There we go. I've tried it different ways. Of, okay, we're back. Awesome. Welcome back. Shalom. Shalom. Um, so I don't know exactly where we left off uh, within the first We talk. were talking about, <laughs> I do, um, it was good. And I had some thoughts and then it lost it. But we were talking about um, building the relationship. Um, you, you were reading from the scripture. I think it was uh, Psalm 139. And then we talked about how God knows everything. We are talking about doing the work and um, how God doesn't expect us to fix ourselves and that he knows everything about us. He talked about self-awareness. And that piece is not necessary. Like, oh, God, like you said, it's for us to build that muscle of faith. So that's kind of where we left off in that self-searching aspect. Yes, yes. I'm going to chime in a little bit on that, a little bit more. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Jeremiah. Say hi to Reborn. Um, she listened in on the last live we did, and she left a really great comment. So welcome, Reborn. Nice to see you. What's up? Thank you for joining us. Uh, Jeremiah 1710. Um, I, uh, Yah, search the heart. I test the mind, uh, even to give. Uh, to each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deeds. Um, and then within that, the, there's a few things I want to touch on that, within that one. Uh, I uh, search the heart. I test the mind, right? Um, when we're talking about faith, searching the heart and testing the mind, right? Um, when we're talking about sin, let's talk about sin a little bit. So sin, um, all of us are guilty of it, right? Um, transgression of the law but the thing about mm -hmm. it is sin is actually a meter of where we're at and where we're growing and the more that we actually mm -hmm. search the mind and search the heart and we're able to overcome these obstacles that stagnate us the more that we grow in our faith right uh, the mm -hmm. self-evaluation piece to me is an important piece because when you sit back and you look at yourself and honest with yourself right the thing is honesty a lot of the time when you're honest with yourself, you can admit the things that you're struggling with and the things that you still need to build faith on. And I feel like that's mm -hmm. a constant conversation that we all have. We look at some of the greatest minds in the world. Um, one thing that you'll find is that there was a lot of failures, a lot of failures. So within those mm -hmm. failures, did that stagnate them? Did that stop them? Right. Some of them it did, depending on what scripture we're talking about and who we're talking about within those scriptures. But some of the great mm -hmm. minds when we're talking about David, um, when we're talking about, you know, Joseph, uh, as we get into I can't even that. You know, <laughs> there's so many. Yeah, there's great examples of that. And um Paul. <laughs> as we're going through that, you know, it's just that is like constant examples of building of that faith and the mistakes that we make mm -hmm. while we're on that trial and that and on that road. Mm hmm. You know, um, the beautiful thing that I wanted to share what I was thinking about is when I when we get down to the personal level. So earlier we talked about how Abraham still had challenges with his faith. Right. He had this great promise, but it, he wasn't perfect, but he still had times where he would like he had doubts or whatever. But the beautiful thing is what um, the big picture for me, I love to look at the bigger picture, like while we're kind of sometimes in the midst of stuff, we look in the here and like we look in the moment and we're flustered about the limits of things we can't see beyond whatever the challenge that we're experiencing. So we sometimes may get stuck in that mind frame and uh, we go against everything maybe that we've been taught or know, like we, we know not to worry, we know not to do this, but we still kind of get caught up in the moment. But the beautiful thing about this covenant, this promise that was given is that he's saying ultimately, 
that I got you. I got you covered. So in our time where we think it's not going to work out, he always comes through. And I think that's the thing, the lesson that I get from um, the Abraham and Sarah story is that at the, at the times when we're limited in mindset, limited in, this can't happen, it's gone to the worst. This is the worst of my experience. I'm at the end of the rope. This is it. And there's always a way because he already promised it. So I love that because it gives us a hope that um, as we continue to grow, he, we're, he, he's not saying, okay, well, when you do this, I'm going to do this for you. He's waiting for us to walk into the alignment of what he's already prepared for us. So um, it's beautiful to know that, uh, I guess, uh, essentially it's that God always works things through and that um, we can trust God because his promises are sure. Uh, I like this reborn soul vibes. Honestly, uh, honesty uh, with yourself opens doors to receive insight and heal. And, you know, yeah. you know like we, we, we can call that a variety of different things, whether we're talking about it on the spiritual or a mental health uh, standpoint, that uh, self-reflective peace and honesty with yourself is such an important thing. And I feel, mm -hmm. I feel that like uh, a lot of what we've been reading you know, a lot of what we've been uh, going through within this uh, discussion, specifically uh, with Abraham mm -hmm. uh, and Sarah, uh, or Sarah, um, is really them discovering that self-reflective piece, you know? And, like, within that journey and that story, as you see Ishmael and Isaac get older, um, mm -hmm. some of the mistakes that they made were st still things that they had to deal with, because that's another thing. Just because you have faith, and you're walking in that faith, you make mistakes, you're not held accountable yes. to those mistakes, meaning that Yah forgives you, right? The creator forgives you, but you still have to deal with some of the ramifications of the things that you did. Because, because, yeah. yeah, that's just reality of what it is. And uh, mm -hmm. within that, if you're not letting it break you, you can learn a lot from it, you know? And I feel that that's one of the most powerful things of that story is that you see that, yeah, they went through the struggle. They made a lot of mistakes. Uh, they made a few mistakes, and then they lacked faith. Even when Sarah uh, was talking to the angel, and the angel was saying that she was going to have a baby, and she was like, Psh, I'm going to have a baby at 90? Like, that's, a, that's an example of, like, her, like, lacking faith. And, and then the angel was like, what did she just say? <laughs> and, like, yeah, you, know. Yeah, you know, but, like, that's an honest yeah. human you know, response, mm -hmm. like, yeah, whatever, dude, I don't know if that's going to happen, but, like, that's an honest human response. We all do. That's absolutely true, but I never want us to, I want us, because the thing is, it's an exciting story. It's not just like a, oh, what was me, and then uh, we had to, like, climb through the mud, and then God just saved the day. No, like, the day was already saved. Like, that's the difference. Like, the promise was already written for you. Like, it was, it was, it was intentional, so sometimes I feel like it's us that gets in the way. We miss the mark because we're looking for something over here and God is already showing you little signs. Like he's always giving little signs, little signs, little signs that this is about to come. And I guess ultimately when we look at it from today's time, right? There's so many things that we didn't expect. Like for example, even COVID. Like, like we say, this is impossible. This, is, can't, this can't happen or this can happen. But with, but with God, we learn in this story that the impossible is not always impossible and not with God. It's possible. Like th there's times where the mo the unthinkable can happen, just like with Sarah. Right. right. And um, when it's for our destiny, like his will is always good for us. His will is always great for us. And it's always tied into the bigger purpose. And so it's, I think it's that because we want to see it from our lens, we sometimes miss what he's trying to do with us. Like we miss the whole puzzle piece coming together mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, his will is always great for us. So it's like, we can, if we, if we were struggling in our trust, we can trust that ultimately everything God plans for us is for our good. And you can't go wrong with that. You know what I mean? Like, yes. Uh, I'm going yeah, to so. bounce off on the scripture on that. Ephesians uh, 2, 8, 9, uh, for by grace, you have been saved. Sorry. And my people came in. Hi guys. <laughs> uh, I saw them out. Hi, Lavina. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, for by grace, uh, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God and not a result of works so that no one may boast. So it's not your own will. He already made that. And he's letting you know that as long as you have faith 
by grace, everything that you are waiting for will go ahead and be fulfilled. It's a matter of accepting the promises. Let's, let's get into that because I know this is a topic that came up recently about healing. Mm -hmm. And it was such a big thing because people are like, well, some people are like, one side says, okay, so will, right? God's will is always for, for our good and always will to heal us. But what we don't understand is God works in his time, not in our timing. So it may be that he has the ultimate, um, you know, good idea about what he, where he wants you to go, but doesn't mean that specifically certain things that you want is his will in the way you want it to go. It could be that it's in the next life that when, you know, when we, when we change and become new being, like, you know, when we, bro, I believe in heaven, right? Me too. That will be maybe your ultimate for healing and your, your nose is now fixed, your eyes are, you can see all the issues you had. Maybe it's then. I'm waiting for that. Maybe it's that he wants you to walk in that journey of faith a little bit longer while he heals other things in you. Maybe the healing doesn't come from direct from like in like a miraculous way in that way. Maybe it comes from changing your diet. Maybe if healing is given to you by things you were ignoring, like a per, you know, going to your your health aid, your doctor, or like I'm saying he you he works in mysterious ways. So when we make things a focus about what we want, you know, then we kind of put, we're putting God in a position from our perspective and, you know, like from us to him versus him to us. It's like, we know it all. We don't know it all. So sometimes it's not that, um, what I'm saying is sometimes what we want or expect or expecting is really, we're saying this in God's will, but that's, but that's what the faith builds. It helps us to reveal that through the communication, through the development of the relationship. Exactly. You won't know what God's will for you by just, you know, just by saying it. Exactly. You know. You no, know, he told Joe, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My mind is not your mind. You know. Let's talk about, Job. no, let's go there. Because Job did something crazy. And people skip over this. But he questioned, I love that verse when he's, and God says, who are you? Did you make the heaven? Like, I love that. Go go into it. Because cause Job was, Job was, you know, he, get into it. You know it better than me. Well. First off, I, I want to go ahead and chime. We have a rebir a reborn soul vibes that wants to chime in on the conversation. Do you mind? Oh, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Okay. And then, like, yeah, we'll definitely, I am still have Job on the mind. So I'm going to go ahead and accept her yeah, into the conversation. And then, in, or put the points in the, in the question thing. But she wants to come, like, that's up to you. Yeah, come up for sure and, like, share her points. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, let's do it. But I, I like that section because it was God reminding Job, like, uh, um, Summer. I'm in control. Hello, King. Salute. Hi, Queen. Hi, Queen. How you doing? Salute, salute. This is, like, so good to my soul just to listen to this. You already know how uh -huh. I feel about this, so I'm all in. And when I'm going to keep my mouth quiet if my soul can keep me there. But I'm listening, <laughs> and wherever I can chime in, oh, this is so great. So great, so great. I'm in tears because, like, okay. Anyways, so that's why I say that things never happen coincidentally. Because I actually was, anyways. Go right in where you feel led, because I feel like this conversation is so necessary. Oh. Um, but we lose, lose, lose train of thought. So, you did you have a thought that you wanted to share at that point, or you just saying your soul is filled? My soul, my soul is filled. I'm just going. I'm going to wait, and I'll put a finger up if I need to add into anything. But I want y'all to flow the way y'all were flowing. I don't want to interrupt. But if I get to add anything in, I'm gonna be like something to let you Ooh, know I love this, this is I so good, good okay. my soul for real yes I was just hitting on how like Job was technically like for the most part we know of him as a person who was pretty faithful right but then he still had a challenge and with what he went through I just like the part where you know we're allowed to question God some some people teach the, say the opposite and say oh no God is asking us to come straight with him express yourself now don't go disrespecting him now but like express your heart let him uh you know it says we should wrestle wrestle in the sense of like uh tell god your your pains your groanings and your complaints and he wants to have that closeness relationship with you so that's that's where that's coming from and then it was in that moment he had to remind job in such a way that job was just like okay i am no doubts right now no doubts after that but it's just the, the verses itself was very powerful um yeah, I don't remember. Oh, here is it. Uh, he says, he says the Lord. This is a uh, Job forty. I don't remember where the beginning starts from, but like where the where the first part of the conversation. It says, okay, here it is. I'm gonna read a little bit uh, if you don't mind. Please do. It says I'm reading from a. Uh, it's actually more of a paraphrase. It says, 
Does the, do, did you teach the hawk how to fly or when to spread its wings towards the south? Does the eagle soar at your request or build its nest where you tell it to? It lives in the high mountains and remains there through the night. The rocky peaks are its stronghold. From its high point, it looks for food. It can spot something close and far away. Its young feast on blood wherever something is dead and there they'll be. And the Lord says to Job, how long will you continue to contend with me and question my wisdom? What do you have to say for yourself? And then Job says in verse 40, I can see how small I am and I don't know as much as I thought I did. Hello, mm -hmm. what else can I say? I will put my hand over my mouth and keep silent. I spoke up once, but I didn't have the right answer. Layers of lessons <laughs> in that. Layers of le and then one of the things we just don't know everything. We don't we we don't know it. One of the things that <laughs> I like to chime on within that is like also keeping in mind that as Job is going through all of these trials, his friends are giving him bad advice. Like they're giving him Oh, let's talk about <laughs> it. But that's also in the Abraham story. Be care hold on, be careful who you take advice from. Go get into it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so much of the advice that his friends were giving him of why he was going through these different trials, they were making excuses of, oh, it must be because you're not faithful, or it must be because you did some sort of sin. And the thing about it is, you know, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, right? So like a lot of the time, and that doesn't mean sometimes the people we love the most may be in the word, but they're not the most high because they don't understand the mind of the most high. So like when we're going through some of the hardest trials that we're going through, instead of going to our friends, we should be going into this. We should be going into our word. We should be studying and asking for the answers and for those answers to be answered through Torah. Because like the things that we don't understand, Yah does understand and will reveal to us if we're walking in faith and understanding that all of those answers can only be revealed through the trial, through the tribulation, and through the faith that we go through within that. I love that you chimed in on the uh, on that breakdown too. That that is powerful. Mm -hmm. Hearing oh. it. I know you got something to say, Reborn. I'll just quickly say that I remember in the worst experience of my life and I reached out to someone who I thought was like a young, like you know, leader, like a, a become a, what do you call it? Becoming a, a becoming a pastor or whatever. And I'm like, who would be the perfect person to pray for me? Someone who's like, you know, sales confident and just somebody who just, you know, I thought would be good in that, like as a, as an intercessor. And it was the same thing. It was like the, what is maybe this, maybe that. It's like, I, you telling, you trying to give me a prescription when all I wanted was prayer. All I wanted was to, to just tap in to the faith that you have, or maybe just to have the extra support. But it was the same thing. And I thought, well, God was saying, I never, I, I didn't, I didn't give you the instructions to go over there now. Mm. I wanted you to sit here with this, with me and this, me and you, this is a me and you situation. <laughs> and it was so revealing because I thought, wow, like, no, it really, it really wakens, wakes you up because you're thinking, you think even the people who are, maybe they study more, they study really deeply, they know the word well, and, and it's like, they're, they're not in the relationship with you and God, so they can't, you have to get to that place of surrender and just stop trying to, even sometimes, even with the word, sometimes we just try to pat a verse here, pat a verse there. We got to have that one-to-one -one moment of just, like Job said, I'm small. What I thought I knew, I don't know it. I'm sorry. You Yo, know? that is so good. That is so good. And, it, and it, it reflects on so many moments in my life that I can testify to, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you know, some are, most of my poems, a lot of them. I got about three or four that start off with listen to your spirit because mm -hmm. God talks to you one-on-one -on -one, and what he tells you, he may not tell the next person who may be going in the same direction you're going because he wants an individual relationship with us. And it's easy to want to follow your friends. It, it, it's hard to it's sit true. in that <laughs> thing that's that's just between you and him. You can't tell, you can tell people that I talk to God. I tell them all the time. They look at me like I'm too cool for Cocoa Puffs and I don't care. I'm going to put this in the comments. It's personal. Right, it's personal. And, 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 that. and, and I understand <laughs> that the path I'm going, I may not go in the same path that everyone is going in. And I see the, mm, the, mm, and the, mm -hmm. <sighs> And the, I can feel the <laughs> vibrations of she don't know what the hell she's doing. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I sure the hell don't. But I know mm. who do. But I know <laughs> who do. And I know where I'm going. 
So mm -hmm. I'm going to go and sit and I'm going <laughs> to confirm with that. That sounds like a good idea and it resonated with my spirit. But before I take that thing by the horns and the whole rope, I'm going to sit in that and I'm going to ask God, is this the direction I should go and give me that confirmation? Because we all have the individual answers to what we need in our life at mm -hmm. any particular time within mm -hmm. us, but that's through the source of God. But if we are too busy looking at this person and this person and this person and asking this person and this person because we think they're experts, it ain't but one expert. You know, mm -hmm. that, that goes into like Hamashiach, even with uh, when you're talking about the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they had a lot of head knowledge. None of them were walking in spirit. And I feel that a lot of the time we get... Sorry, what was the name you said? Oh, say the... uh, Easy. Oh, no, I was saying that um, a lot of the time uh, no, who was the name? I want to get the name right because he knows all the Hebrew names. Oh yeah, yeah, no, the uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So like you know the oh, okay. yeah, in the New, no, in the okay. New Testament. Mm -hmm. So you know with them having so much head knowledge, they weren't walking in mm. spirit. And every time you hear okay. the Messiah talking okay. to him, he's talking in spirit. In fact, he knows that he's so high in spirit that he has to bring it down to parables so that they can understand where he's coming from. You know what I'm saying? So like within mm -hmm. that. You know, we have a lot of people who have so much head knowledge, you know, and they act as mm -hmm. if they know who the creator is. And a lot of the time they're mm -hmm. well studied, but they're not spiritually connected. And sometimes okay. that head knowledge, just like Yah was explaining, you know, when he's really breaking down, like, you don't know my mind, Job. You don't know. I created this. He's talking about all the things that he created and all the things that he did that are outside of man's understanding. So, like. How can we even have head knowledge to understand how we're supposed to walk in spirit unless we're in spirit, unless we're like accepting spirit, unless, you know, we have to be in spirit to understand how the most high is guiding us in the first place. Head knowledge is important. Mm -hmm. Don't get it twisted. Read mm -hmm. your word. Know your precepts. Know, know, know your chapters. But the thing about it is if you're not in prayer, if you're not constantly in meditation with the Most High, then you're going to miss the actual direction of where he's trying to get you because you're so focused on the indoctrination, the laws. A lot of the time, a lot of my Israelite brothers and sisters, my Ox and the Cody's, they get so focused on the law that they don't understand the spirit. And it's important for us to walk in the Ruach. It's important for us to yeah, understand yeah, the Ruach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, because... The yeah, I think that, and, and I think sometimes we pull from verses and we, we think that is like that it when we say um take the word and preach it mm. to them, preach it to the people they think that that let's study and then i can just preach what the word says but i'm gonna tell you from my experience i have read the word and it meant something for me when i was 10 right. and i've read that same word at 18 and it means something completely different because i've grown since then i'm not the same person on that day when i was 10 when i read it I'm a different person. I can read it now when I'm 51 and it's going to mean something completely different because I've grown. So what you're preaching at, to me at 10, 15, 18, 30, <laughs> and 50, this is where that personal relationship with God comes in because some people are still at the 10th year old level and they're still preaching the, yeah, the, 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 the milk preaching the meat. when you were 10 <laughs> and they're going to preach to your kids when they're 10 and their kids when they're 10 but where have we grown or that particular person pastor whatever say who's been ordained to do these things grown to the point where we've evolved because it has to go from the flesh to the spirit for you to walk in the spirit then you have to bring it back down to the flesh like Christ did and do that parable thing. That's why I do what I do because you take it however you're going to take it. I only know what I know and I can only give you what I can give you according to his will and, and what you get, you get. But there are going to be some people that may still be on the 18 year old level can hear me and they're going to go back to saying, well, what she's saying is not right that the duh, because you are not where I am. And I, we, and mm -hmm. we who, 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 are, who are trying, who are doing the walk in spirit thing, when you are really in spirit, that's when the non judgmental thing comes through because you can be aware that other people are at different stages in their life. And you can't sit there and say, well, because you didn't do this and because you didn't do that. He might tell me to walk backwards to get where the hell you're going walking forward. Don't play with me. Right. <laughs> wow.
Yeah. Facts. That's all I'm saying. Mm. You know what I mean? We all have it's, different paths. We all have different right. paths. And only yeah. your relationship I, with the most high will get you to that path. And that's just I wanted to say though, like some like I said the last time, we make the, the simple things difficult and God is like, You're not up here. So I don't want you to you, you making making it too too much. I'm making it simple for you. It's A B C I'm making it very basic. And so when I say prayer, I just tell myself communication with God. I'm just talking to God. Because you can you can do that anywhere. And that means that we should be having more talks with God. It's just be like, you know, like I remember one day, this was kind of funny. I went to this um play, this 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 uh Christian play. And then they had this moment where they broke up the play and they said, they're going to have everybody pray for somebody. You can go up and you can have somebody pray with you. And the young girl said to me, and and I pray that when she chooses the shoes she's going to wear and the outfit she's going to wear, that God helps her. To, I said, I love that. It was just so deep and personal. Like even just to even think about, oh, what you're going to put on to, before you step out the house. And I said, yes, because it should be that type of conversation, like where you just, he's, you know, like you can just talk to God anywhere you are. Like sometimes we get caught up, like you said, you hinted at rituals and mm. um, doing like doing this great discovery. God never runs away from us. It's us that's running away from him. So if we just kind of sit still for a moment, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get signs. We'll know when he's, you know what I'm saying? We'll know that he's trying to reach, reach to us. We feel that. We're all made to, to feel a sense of worshiping of something. So God is always speaking to us. You know, so I'm saying that sometimes I feel like we make, as a people, we make thing, it make it really. We go and find. We try to find everything else. We we worship. The, we worship the tree. We worship everything else. We try to find everything to kind of fill the void, but not the Creator. The cre you know what I'm saying. So we find everything in the creation, but not the one that's actually the source of it all. So that's one of the most powerful I'm things about the Job verse yeah. you just wrote, uh, read, because he lets you know everything he created. He said, "I created the stars in the." <laughs> in the universe. He's I created the birds. He's I created all of yeah. this life. And I think that But I don't think it was to be arrogant though. Like like I just had to say that because some people may see that as God's like it is a check, but it's not checking him in a in an ego thing. Uh -huh. It's like saying yeah. But my mind if 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 because he was describing the even the uniqueness of what they do. Job didn't even his response is telling me that I didn't even think of that. Like I didn't even think about the the connection to why would the bird do this or why would the, he didn't even know the nuances of how God organizes and orchestrates the whole thing. So he's, she's trying to speak to his mind and say, okay, well, let's, let's minds meet mind. I am, I'm of a higher mind and I want you to come into my, my higher thoughts and thinking. So if you're at this level trying to compare your thoughts to mine, it's not going to work. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And, you know, societally, that's where we're at, too. I feel like we're, you know, when you think about the way that the Israelites exited, uh, when they exited Egypt, um, they went straight mm -hmm. to worshiping a calf, right, a golden calf. And the reason that I feel is because they still had to shed off so much of Kemet. They had to shed off Egypt in order to understand the creator again, because they had been indoctrinated mm -hmm. for so long within uh, the structure, the infrastructure that they were in. So, like, they knew it was regular for them to worship other gods. It was a part of their culture. Even though they were Israelites, even though they believed in what they believed in, they had to shoot all of right. that off in order to reestablish <laughs> a relationship with the Most High. And I feel that's where we're you at right now. The next point. Yeah, go ahead. No, it's like, then there's also a sacrifice that's required. Right. Sometimes we have to, sometimes, well, it's not sometimes. God is always above culture or the nuances of things that we normally do because he's just, he just moves that way. Like he says, he, he's no respecter of persons, not in terms of um, ego again or negativity, but he's saying that I am not, I'm God of God. I am God above all. So it's like, this is your lifestyle, but you can't, you, you can't, you can't, that can't, that can't be superior to what I'm telling you or what I want you to do. Like it's, you, you can't have, well, it, like with the Israelites, when he said about them worshiping, like he knew, he would have known that that was their influence and it would take them some time, but eventually you're going to have to give up something to get the something else, you know? <laughs> right. Getting them in line, you know, and it take time. And it took time, 40 years, right? 40 years for them to grow. to grow. Yeah. Even with us, it's like, even in those small things, sometimes the sacrifice comes in a way where we're almost forced because we're just so tied. And it's, sometimes that's where it's painful is because we wait until it's like, it's hard to let go of something. And then it's like, now this is our effort. When God was trying to show you like the little, little steps, like I was telling you from the like, baby step, that you didn't, you know, I was trying to pull you away from then, and you're like, nah, I want to do what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, it takes time. It takes time because 
you know, faith is a muscle and you have to go through lacking faith in order to understand when you actually have faith. You have to go through it. You have to fail. You have to continually go through these um, failures in order to acquire the strength to understand that the Most High has got you covered. And I feel as long as we continually strive and have faith that he's going to cover us, we'll acquire that faith that we're actually ultimately trying to get to. Um I'm saying I like to add in to what Summer Please said do. earlier about like everything's it's already written. So it's if and written. his word will not come at void. So if it's already written, then just walk in that. But That's it's right. hard. It's hard, like you said, because of the previous uh uh programming, so to speak. It's hard to get out of that shell. But it's it it is so important that I tr we try to also change the language because well, if it's already written, okay, if it's already written and we're walking in our life and we have the desire to please God and do his will, whether we have other people telling us that we made mistakes, they're not mistakes. They're building blocks. It's just a building block. It is designed for you to go through that so you can build that trust, so you can tweak and understand it. The awareness of where you at in the now and being aware of he is above all and he is directing your path, that awareness will eliminate half of those blockages that we put in our head because we're too busy worrying about making mistakes. And when we make, make mistakes or we make a, a left turn, we are designed to get there. I went into a marriage thinking mm -hmm. I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing, right? It fell apart. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, what happened? Lord, didn't I tell you I was doing? Yeah. But that was a season and a reason. I didn't say, I did say you was going to have a partner. I did say you was going to be happy. But I didn't say it was him. You said it was him. Mm -hmm. oh, so when I finish man. with you, and you learn all these lessons you got to learn, and the light bulb goes ding, mm -hmm. ding, ding, ding. Now it's not a mistake. None of that was a mistake. It was the biggest mm -hmm. step mm -hmm. that I had to take. And it was the one that had to put my foot down and says, I know my God. I know what he's been telling me all this time. And I have been ignoring some little clues, like you said, along the way. And now I'm aware of the clues that I, I, I ignored, missed, skipped, when I led to my own understanding. Okay? Mm -hmm. And when I submitted everything. Okay. <laughs> I gave up. I was nice. I was good. I was loyal. I was blah, 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 blah. I'm done. Here you go. Tell me where I'm supposed to be because I'm confused mm. right now. He said, didn't mm -hmm. I tell you I'm not a God of confusion? Mm. Mm. So let's mm. straighten that up right now. You're not confused. Mm. I'm redirecting you. Redirecting you. Yeah. yeah. But you know, even in that experience, yeah. You want to you share? Go ahead. You can go ahead first. Yeah. Uh, I have Hebrews 11, 23 verse tw through 29, right? Um, by faith, mm -hmm. Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king. And they were not afraid of the king's edict. Uh, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of Elohim rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace mm -hmm. for the sake of Christ as a greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his uh, reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger, he preserved because he saw him who uh, is invisible. By faith, he kept Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not be touched, the firstborn of Yeshua. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on the dry land, but when the Egyptians mm -hmm. tried to do so, they were drowned. Mm -hmm. By faith. By faith. Wow. Oh, wow. You know, I wanted, I love that scripture, but I, I, before we get into that, I wanted to quickly touch on what um, you were sharing reborn is because when you, when you spoke, it reminded me that in also the building of our faith is a, is a moment of, of where we need to also confess, like repent, like have a moment of like, because sometimes we're like, we already said we hold ourselves back, but those experiences, sometimes it humbles us. So that we are not in a state where we feel like we don't need God. 
we don't need any correction. We don't need, and that's, I think that, I think when I think, reflect through my journey, I feel like that would be the worst place to be in is to be like, I don't need God. I don't think that is just, wow. Like if, imagine how, cause you, cause at that stage, you don't even know that you're, you're not in that, like you're so out there that you don't even know that you need humbling. Like you don't even know that you, you're, you're basically like, you feel higher than yourself. Like you feel, and God doesn't want us to get to that point where he can't reach us. It's not that, well, he always reaches out to us, but I'm saying that where we can't attune to him because we're so distracted by other things that we don't even feel like, you know, we need him. Right. So for me, I feel like those experiences teach us um, how to depend on God. And it also will build our faith because when we're in a, it's like whenever someone's sick and they start praying and it's like, they start to come to God through that, you know, through the experience, because it's like, if now they're so desperate, they can't find any other solution. But God is saying, look, I want to be your solution before there's a need for the, for the solution, before there's a problem. I want, to, I want to be involved in your life that way because you're that important to me. We have another person that wants to join in on the conversation. Uh, so before we join in the conversation, I think we need, to, we need to reflect on the points because they're so important. So we can add that person, but we need to, I want to hear your response in, um, and then the, 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 the points that you brought up from the scripture, and then we should then we go ahead and bring in that yeah. other individual. Well, I'm going <laughs> to, just for a heads up, I might have to uh, bounce off here in a little bit. Because, <laughs> yes. yes, yes, just because of time. Um, but Hebrews 23 uh, through 29, I, be I believe in my, personal, um, in my personal observation and reading of the scriptures, it's a um, timeline of those who lived in Torah, who had promises that were fulfilled and how they walked in faith. Uh, and the thing is, is that so much of the time we talk ourselves out of the promises that are already there. And if we look in the Torah, if we look in the word, these promises have been proven over and over, whether we're talking about Moses, uh, whether we're talking about Abraham, uh, whether we're talking about Yahshua, whether we're talking about the disciples, these are all examples of what it is to walk by faith, understanding that if we take our own reasoning out of it, and that's one of the hardest things for us to do as people because we're so intelligent. We have so much intelligence, right? But we don't understand that the intelligence of the Most High is so much more than ours. And the more that we walk in the Most High's intelligence, letting go of our own will, right? Letting Yah, letting God steer the will, um, that is ultimately when we're walking in the promises and our purpose, because we all have a purpose. All of us are called to uh, fulfill our test, our journey on this mm -hmm. earth. And the only ways that we can actually get to that is to go ahead and be reminded. And that's what I see in Hebrews eleven twenty three. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because uh, they mm -hmm. saw he was no ordinary child. He was chosen right? He's chosen one. And they were not afraid of the king's edict. So like within that, that's letting you know, like his, his parents seen the greatness in this child when he was born, you know? And the thing about it is a lot of the time, the people around us will talk us out of our own greatness. We'll talk us out of our own relationship. Mm -hmm. We'll talk us out of our own faith. So like understanding the most high's faith and knowing that everything is already laid out, uh, is what really comes home for me of this Hebrews eleven twenty three uh, verse uh, through twenty nine. I just want to read the definition one, once again for those that, that maybe just came in the room, and just as a reminder to us, faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Mm -hmm. And the word that jumps out for me, I love it. I, I've never used that. I bear, I don't think how many times do you remember using that word to people you know? But it says complete mm. trust, complete trust, and complete. And you know, confidence. Beautiful, that word complete. a beautiful about that. And it's not, you know, we go from how their parents had faith and they knew that he was special, but think about how they carried that faith on. They put him in a basket and put him in a river. They had no idea where he was going to end up. But who do you think they was talking to to do those things? Mm, it was right. their faith. And they knew they had to do something. But that it's not talked about. But think about the amount of faith to put your child in a basket and put him in a river. Mercy. And don't know if you're ever going to hear or see or no. You don't know if you'll ever see him again. Well, mm -hmm. it's amazing. So we got to follow through with the faith. Not just talk about it. 
We got to walk in that thing. And it can get hard, especially like Job. If everything is stripped from you, you're going to have to question if you did it right. Did, did I do something wrong? Is everything, okay, the chill, okay, the wife, okay, the, the land, the every, everything? Like, everything. I, and I, who? Lord, what's going on here? Mercy. Everything. What's going on here? And then look at the end. And so that's what I think we should, uh, we should, we should tie it all in is, is 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 how ooh, it's just too much it's just too much like you remember the end of the job story it's just like i think it was just blessed beyond what he even thought was possible because it was it, if you lose your family i mean what else like he lost children he he was plagued with diseases uh his wife told him why don't you just curse god so you can get out of here already you know like there were so many people around him who were trying to feed doubt feed question for whether it was his partner or his friends uh they were feeding doubt in him and the fact that he can, and that's the thing like you know when hush Tom was satan went to yeah he's like go ahead and test joe i know he's faithful you can put him through anything he's gonna be faithful to me i know that and um that's the thing that not all of us could I, you know let us go through a little bit of that pressure and let you know who you truly are and when you go through this yeah, trial, yeah. Trial, but there's so many there's so many lessons in it, and I want I want us to also touch in that when we when we when we talk about this, it's not it's a selflessness that has to occur. Like it, it's like when we talk about surrender, we talk about building. Like even in the Abraham story, we talked about him interceding, right? So even in the Job story, there's so much lessons in there. Like of how, like what I'm saying is God is guiding us in the ways. It says that he prayed for his friends, and then it was then he had his healing. So it just shows you how important that God is trying to break this. Um, this this way of this self-absorption because when we're in that state of mind that's the most times where we don't really feel like we need god where we're, we're like we're self everything we can do it ourselves everything we just got we like we know too much right so even in that to say that after he prayed for his friends that was in um 42 uh, towards the end mm -hmm. and prayed for those friends and his three friends and god healed Job and prospered him and gave him twice as much as he had before and then he was welcome back home. Mm. He went through the fire and came out of the other end. Twice as much. Yes. But look but like what I'm saying is look at the look at the journey through his his um it's it's this it's the it's the humility and the sacrifice. Like in other words the the self surrender. That's what I mean. Like he's letting go of that and then he said okay and even still like you're in your own pain it's like why well, am I worried about what you got going on? I, do you see what I'm going through? Right. And he's like, you know what? I still believe in this God. I'm gonna pray on behalf of you. I'm gonna I'm gonna intercede. And then what that says to God is he says, because that takes a lot of faith and courage. You that's God, you telling God, I trust you so much that through my prayer, you're you know, can you help them through the belief that I have in you? Right. Right. And that's and that's the lesson and in it's itself. Not, it's not the story to tell, yeah. It's the lesson in itself, just because like the fact that he was con constantly praying, constantly praying for his people, constantly praying for his friends, didn't lose any faith within that. That's I mean, that's what I look at as, as so many of these prophets, so many of these stories is the lessons, how do we apply it to our lives? Because we are going through yeah. some of these trials. We are going through some of these tribulations. Hello. Uh, can I just say this because of my mouth my, my brain is because I have to give it an LA, LA, um, it's okay. So the question came this week: How many times have we prayed for those who have hurt us? Ooh. How how many times have we remembered even saying a prayer in the like right after? Like how many times does that come to our mind when we literally prayed for our enemy? If somebody didn't remind me, or if I never read that thing today, I mean, I probably didn't think of it right at right away. I never it never came quickly to me. So that's obviously an area of still growth. But I thought about it, and I'm like, is that? what is also affecting my my the um my healing like in other words when we can get to the point like job and be like i'm gonna pray for those that are hurting me mm -hmm. right because remember the picture is bigger than just the moment of your pain there's something that god wants to do with this whole experience as as you just said reborn right right so that's humbling in of itself like it, it's it's and that's what's changing us it's not just the, ex the direct experience it's what we're doing regardless of what we went through what are we still willing to do what are we still willing to do that's the question what are we still and i feel like that prayer that prayer for your enemies you know that prayer for those um that's the self-healing you know that that really goes into the self-healing and knowing where you're at within yourself because if you're holding on to the grudges if you're holding on to hate 
if you're holding on to anger, pain, uh, that doesn't allow you to grow. And a lot of the time, the person that you're praying for a lot of the time may have already forgot about it, may have already moved on, and you're still holding on to it. So they go on a vacation, by the way. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's mm. excellent. I probably needed that. Um, because, um, like, no, honestly, I, so. I don't <laughs> wish harm on anyone. But there was something you mm -hmm. said earlier, King, about... Um, to stay away from certain energies when you know you're not supposed to be engaged in those things. So I can pray from you from way over here. Right over here. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And right. and I wish you no harm. I hope, you know, I, sometimes I'll be honest. I don't even know what to pray for you for because I know you're coming against me. So all I say is, mm -hmm. Lord, let your will be done because I can't, you I also can't we know we're powerful beings too. So you can't you can't go against what God says either. He might have a whole program for them. So I'm not I don't I don't want to get up in there because understand you gotta stay in your place too. <laughs> That's real. I gotta stay in my place too. If I Some go over are going here, through judgment. putting my words and putting my energy into something that ain't none of my business, all that's gonna leak over here. So you gotta know when to hold them and when to fold them. I'm not trying to be in anybody's. And that's a part of the Abraham lesson too. Mm hmm. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, sorry, it says sometimes, oh man, I had the notes. Sometimes it's better to separate. Right. One of the lessons. Sometimes it's better to separate, pray for protection. You look at Proverbs, David was praying against people who were plotting against him. So I think the forgiveness aspect is the biggest thing, in my personal opinion. Uh, when we're talking about the New Testament, that's one of the biggest things that Yahshua really brings home is forgiveness. And I think a lot of the time, mm -hmm. us as believers, us as humans, uh, we have a tendency to hold that grudge, hold that bitterness. Um, and the fact that, you know, you look at someone like Job who's going through what he's going through and he still had faith to pray for those who were giving him bad advice, may even felt like they were trying to hate on him a little bit or maybe take advantage of his, uh, his misfortune. And how many of us have had that happen to us? We're going through something hard and the people around us who love us sometimes is like poking, poking in our wounds, you know, um, but who are you through that? You know, and I and those are the things that make me go back and pray and really go back through these stories to see how these people mm -hmm. operated and dealt with that, because uh, it's easy to talk about. It's hard to practice. It's really hard to practice mm -hmm. in, in real time. But that's where faith comes in. That's where that spiritual walk, walking in spirit versus walking in your flesh. Because your flesh will make you want to attack someone. Your flesh will want, make you want to bang on someone. But the spirit will make you want to ascend above it. You know, like, oh, I got to be better than that. But I want to say the beauty in what you just said, which, which just came to my mind, is when I get really discouraged, like in a situation where, you know, I'm in that place and I'm, you know, I'm hoping or expecting friends or people that I love to understand. When they, when God lets it all, when all the cards fall down and lets it come down to just like, just me and him it reminds me that well duh he, he they're not going to understand like he's really he's basically saying i'm closer to you now because they don't have the mind i have so it's almost like it's almost like a a, a blessing in reverse because why would you expect the the people that are also going through their own sin world sin problem as humans to understand what i have for you they can they can't they they can do some some help but they can't get you to where I want you to go. So in other words, it just shows his love even more because he's like, now I can, now I, now I caught you close to me. Now you have to pay attention to me. So the fact that he's allowing that is expression of his care and love and devotion and dedication to you. Hallelujah. That's real. That is real. It's like, that's the bigger picture is what I'm saying. It's like in that moment, it's like, dang, this sucks. And it's like, well, I can turn to you, like, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't got nowhere else to go, seriously. Right, right. <laughs> Sometimes the only place, and that's the best place to be, right? When you can't turn to your friends, you have nobody else to turn to but the most high. That's probably the best place to turn to, you know? And it's fact. And sometimes around. he will strip everything so you won't have to. But I believe that comes from your, your, what he knows in your heart, because he reads your heart. So it's a lot of times that we may not say things and do things, but he can tell, he knows he, he's counted the hairs on our head. So he knows us through and through. So sometimes our actions does not match 
what our heart wants because we're too busy looking at other people, following other people, and doing what other people say. And sometimes mm -hmm. he has, to, and while we're praying, Lord, help me with this. Help me. With this. Oops. I'm sorry. Bounce. There's the door. See ya. Talk to you in a minute. Thank you. Sorry, that was the second time he kicked it off the dog on stand, and I can't have that no more. But I, I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? You were talking here. Oh, no. Uh, I don't know what you were saying. Uh, uh, I lost it, but we were talking. With the essence was about um, when God, when God is all you have, God is all you need. <laughs> That's yeah. What I so it. sometimes He will strip those things away so we can hear clearly only Him, and it's not going to feel mm -hmm. good when you're going through that process. But once you get probably about your fifth revelation, you'll be like, oh, oh, I'm gonna tell you this right now. When the pandemic happened started i didn't panic i felt it i felt him saying because my marriage had fell apart two years prior to so he sat my butt wow. down then mm. so when the pandemic mm. happened i said he's sitting the whole world down i hope they hear it mm -hmm. i hope they Pause. hear it and i hope they know what's going on here so i never panicked i never panicked i was like nope He's going to protect me and my children. I know it. There's a reason for this. But the reasoning, because I was already in that that higher elevation in my spirit, I could see it. So when everybody was tripping, I was like, I, I, and I can't tell you how I know this. I just know this. I know it because I just mm -hmm. went through it personally. Now everybody's about to go through it. And I'm going to go through yeah, it. You, but I know how to handle <laughs> that. But he had to put me in there prior to or I probably would have went I feel you. cuckoo for cuckoo I feel you. when mm -hmm. it went down you know what I mean so mm -hmm. praise God mm -hmm. for that because I could see it so I seen the pandemic as a whole spiritual movement I know we want to blame mm -hmm. bats in China and all kinds of other stuff I, I, stuff. I get it <laughs> whatever but that was a sit down and listen moment and I felt that mm -hmm. Another opportunity. That's how I saw it. Yeah. So we have one more person. So before we get off, I want to make sure that we close out in prayer. We'll make sure that uh, you know we put we put some mm -hmm. words up to the Most High. But we have one more person who actually wants to join in. Um, and I'm gonna get. Uh, go ahead, yeah. I was gonna head off. Head off soon. You're too. gonna head off so, soon. Um, mm -hmm. Let's do this. The person who wants to chime on, we're gonna get back on again. Let's uh. Can we let them put, the, put their thought in the thing? Is it, or they have a final thought? Let's ask them what they have. Because I don't want to leave somebody out either, but I don't want to start a whole... We could do part three. <laughs> Facts. Um, would you mind... DFT, um, would you mind putting your thoughts in there and we can chime in on it a little bit in the in the inbox or in the uh, comment section, I should say? And then um, next time we get on, let's build it out. Like, we can have more people join us. I love it when people join us. I think it adds on to everything that we're talking about. Um, I think that's cool. How much time do we actually have? Because I don't know what you feel. How much time do you have? Um, actually, Two minutes? Three minutes? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do like three minutes. Is that cool? Okay. Like, yeah, so I was going to say, uh, let's ask if it's something she could share within the time frame you're going to, and I'm gonna, I might dip off um, within that three minutes time, but if she, if you, if she can share in that time and it's you know, valuable, then, yeah, we should let her on. If not, we can do it for the part three. Let's do a part three. And uh, uh, she said, uh, no, thank you. Good night. We don't, We want to honor you for sure. It's not that we're trying to get off, um, yeah, without hearing what you have to say. We know you probably were adding something on. It's just we've been talking for a minute. Well, she's fire. So that's why I was like, you know, because, yeah, I wanted her to get a chance to say what she had to say. Let's see. I'm hot in here. Is it hot where y'all are? The Holy Spirit fire, because it's hot. I don't know why it's so hot, like, in the night. <laughs> it's 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 nice. I'm in Colorado, so it's it's nice where I'm at. It's not too bad. Okay, so happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this, is, this is, this, this, this was the, this was the, this was the talk. I have a thought when we're, when we're ending. I have something that we, um, connecting to the Abraham lessons and what we just said. So that will be on my final thoughts. Let's do final thoughts then. 
if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. You guys can go ahead and go. I'll go after. <laughs> sure. Um, the conversation piece itself, uh, being on faith, uh, me personally, has been something that, yeah, it's been something that's been a challenge for sure. But it's been a process for me. Uh, and within it, being able to listen to the reflections of others, uh, hear where everybody else is at uh, within their own studies and the ways that they interpret the scriptures helps me myself. And I hope it's something that helps everybody mm -hmm. else within their own walk and their journey. Yeah. Uh, whether you're a believer of the Most High or not, me personally, I walk in faith in my in my creator. And that gives me courage to continue on. So if nothing else, hopefully this encourages you. Uh, if nothing else, to go do more of your own research uh, and find the most high for yourself. So those are my final thoughts. Mm. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> I appreciate that. Oh. I want to appreciate this room. I'm going to first say salute to you, Queen, because Summer Rose is the one that brought me into this room because I follow her and her notification center. Summer, when I heard yeah. the subject you was talking about, it just lit my spirit on fire. And I wanted to come in earlier, and I was like, okay, mind your business, but sit there. And I left, and I came back, and it was still on fire, and I was like, I got to come in here and talk about it because y'all just made my spirit leap. It was confirmation of a whole lot of things because I feel like I'm in a whole lot of little pieces of the Bible story right now in different stages of my life. So I have to remember right. the verses. I have to remember that faith. I have to remember the promise that I talked to God when I was a little girl before I understood anything. I didn't even know yes. how Jesus fit yes. into the picture. I was like, I don't know who this cat is. And you're telling me to 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 to, to follow him, but I know you. And and I'm telling, being real honest about it, because he was answering prayers before <clears throat> I knew Jesus. So I was like, hold up, hold up, who's this? Because I'm very careful about making sure I'm not worshiping idols and other people, you know, and other things. And that included Jesus. Like, oh, who's this cat? Let me see, understand, and I'm going to need you to help me understand. But I also know that if I <clears throat> ask the Most High to show me something, he's going to show it to me. And it took a yeah. while, but then he started showing me, and I was doing these things without even understanding it. Let me say that. I was, in the name of Jesus, you said to ask for it in my name. You know, okay, I'm going to do these things. But I, in my heart, it was kind of scary because I'm like, man, I hope I ain't following the, the, the red brick road. You know what I mean? But I'm just going to say those same parables works in my life right now. And I'm only saying this because I'm going to always believe in the most high. And I'm, I, I'm not sorry that Jesus is what I follow because I follow the Bible. But I also have read other things. I've had Mormons come to my house. I've had Jehovah Witnesses come to my house. I've had all kinds of introductions to other things. And at first it used to scare me and I used to be like, uh-uh. You know, but I understand that he has to talk to people in different ways because everybody's not going to get it. You know, they're not going to get it. So I don't have no um, biases with other religions because if I was, if I did, I would be judgmental. Right. So I can't. You, he leads people the way he needs to lead them, how he needs to lead them. And I let it go. So I said all that to say is I'm more into the spiritual stuff. So I'm doing the parable changing kind of thing and walking in spirit so i'm i will never deny my lord never will i ever but we also have to know that seek ye first the kingdom of god and everything else will be added unto us and the kingdom of god is inside of us so the answers are already there that's where that meditation mm -hmm. and that prayer thing comes in. That's where that seeking that one-on-one, -on -one, sitting down and listening, that's where all that comes in. So we we have to move into, first, some of them got to move into the word. But then once you get into the word and you know that's already mm -hmm. integrated in your body, now it's come time on, to girl. walk the walk. Then you don't mm -hmm. have to sit there and recite a scripture because I'm walking in it. Because you're I'm walking. I'm scripture. Exactly. You walk into the new chapter. Mm -hmm. that, uh, mm -hmm. That's a good one. Yes, thank you. So that's all I have to say, and that's not to deter anybody. Just know we're all at different levels, and we're all at different parts. But at some point in time, he's going to want us to integrate that and know that that power is here. And we, too, could touch water and turn it to wine. We, too. But we can't even get out of the, 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 the pre-programming that was already here saying that we can't. No stop and don't. 
That's not what mm -hmm. God said. And that's all I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the room. And I pray that he continues to feed our souls and our spirit through him. And we hear him clearly. I pray that you continue to open up these doors and, and the minds of people so we can get in here and have these conversations. Mm -hmm. I'm blessing you guys both. You know, crown your head to the soles of your feet and everything mm -hmm. that you may touch be like Midas and it turns to gold. I thank you I and believe. I bless you and I send blessings to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our praises. Thank you. What a word. Amen. Amen. Um, I really like what you said. So that, that walk, mm, you said it, you said it all. I think for me, I don't even have no last words. Now I have a, I have a last scripture yeah. because this scripture sums it all, sums it up all for me. And then the thought that I had that I was going to share before kind of goes with it in terms of one of the major lessons I learned from um, this whole discussion or a major key points. So the scripture that you, we know this one, it is, um, the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm going to read it in this paraphrase because when I break down each line, which I won't, but it, it just sums up that whole relationship. So it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me lie down in green meadows. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores the strength of my soul. He guides me along paths of righteousness. Even when I walk through a valley of frightful shadows facing death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You spread a banquet for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with drops of oil. My heart overflows with gratitude. And the last, your goodness and mercy will be with me every day of my life and i will live with the lord in his house forever hallelujah praise you and so the the connect the last the, the connection for me is when we think about the promises right there and that verse right there i have no need i have everything i need we turn to that when we're when we're having the struggles in our faith journey go back to those promises go back to those verses and continue to have faith even when the way doesn't seem clear. And that's my final thought. Oh, Thank you oh, so God. much. That was beautiful. Thank you, Thank you that so much. That was beautiful. <laughs> I just want to say one thing because you made me bring it out. Let's live in today because sufficient right. are the troubles for tomorrow, right? Today. If sufficient is what we have today. And if you, what you said was so true because we have everything that we need. So we have everything mm. that we need that today. <laughs> and all we have to do is live for today because we have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. So that helps you enjoy the life that he's been get, break, graced us with every single day. It's a renewal. If you woke up, it is a renewal of your mind, of your spirit. And don't even worry about yesterday. It ain't even a mistake. Remember, it's a stepping stone for, to next, for today. If yesterday was a stepping stone for today. Uh, Amen. Yes, yes. That word. Mm -hmm. So there's no need to fret and worry about how you're going to do something tomorrow. Let's worry about what's happening today. And thank you for today. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for this today. I needed that replenishment. And I can replenish some things, but sometimes even the ones that's pouring over, they need their cups refilled too. So thank you. Yeah. I just quickly before we um, do the closing uh, prayer out, I want to thank those that joined in to listen. Um, this live would not even be what it is without your sharing, your commentary, your thoughts, your support. Um, Michael has been my friend and known me for a little while, and, and he's just so spontaneous and says, hey, do you want to do this? And sometimes I'm a little nervous, although I have my own shows. But just thank you for just the open hearted um, to create this discussion because we all need to have this kind of conversation. Right. We're not no experts. We're just Regular sinners saved by grace. So thank you those for those that joined in in the conversation as well. Yes, yes. We're all growing each other and everybody has different perspectives, different wisdom, uh, different spiritual knowledge. Everybody, we appreciate everything that you've contributed within the conversation. Um, we will do this again. I think it's needed. I know it's needed for me, if nothing else. I love having this exchange because it does sharpen my sword and gets me uh, stronger in my faith daily so i just wanted to uh close out with uh, a few words of prayer 
Um, I feel like it's an important thing. We talked about that before summer, maybe opening up yeah. with prayer next time as well. Um, yeah. But this time I'll be the closer. And the next time we'll go ahead and whoever the spirit is leading, close it yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Abba Father, we thank you for everything that you've done within coordinating all of these brilliant minds, these brilliant spirits and bringing us together to be able to exchange and understand faith more in depth through us understanding you, utilizing your word, utilizing your scripture so that we can grow each other through you. We praise you and thank you for everything that you continually do within guiding us through this turbulent time, all the things that are happening and making us not focused on the outside, but focused on the inside. As we grow more in our spiritual insight in who you are and continually seek your face, we ask that you just continually bring the remnant together so that we can continually grow and understand you more in everything that we do. All praise to the most high. Amen. Amen. Blessings. Mm, thank you. Bless up. Thank y'all. Let's do it again soon. Good night. Huh? So let's do this again soon. For sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bless up.